Uh, for our next talk, I'd like to introduce Dr. Daniel Belgrave. Dr. Belgrave is a machine learning researcher in the healthcare intelligence group at Microsoft Research in Cambridge, uh, Cambridge in the United Kingdom on Project Talia. Prior to joining Microsoft, Dr. Belgrave was a tenured research fellow at Imperial College London. Her research focuses on integra integrating medical domain knowledge, probabilistic graphical modeling and causal modeling frameworks to help develop personalized treatment plans and intervention strategies for mental health. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Belgrave. The floor is yours. Thank you, Pete, for that kind introduction. So today I'm talking about um, some of the work that we do on machine learning for personalized mental health care. So I'll be focusing on one particular study which we published earlier this year, and I'll give a broad overview of the particular project that I'm leading on called Project Talia, which is all about um, creating AI systems to improve mental health and personalized mental health interventions. So the big challenge, um, what I've spent a lot of my, my research working on is trying to understand heterogeneity. And heterogeneity is a huge problem when we're looking at um, the effect of interventions on different diseases. Um, previously in the research that I did while I was at Imperial College, I focused on asthma and allergic diseases and really trying to understand are there different endotypes or subtypes of disease which are representative of how people would respond to different treatments. So in this example here, we see a patient group which has the same diagnosis, the same prescription. So this could be something like lung cancer. They are given a similar drug. They have a similar manifestation of symptoms. But what we see is there's heterogeneity in how symptoms are manifested over time and how people respond to the treatments. So for some people, the drug may be toxic and not beneficial. Some people, the drug works but they are bad side effects and some people are fine on such interventions. So the grand challenge is something called endotype discovery. And with endotypes, what we're trying to do is understand what is the distinctive underlying mechanism that is responsible for that heterogeneity? How can we under understand subgroups of complex diseases? And um, this is the foundation for stratified med medication. And the aim is to seek better, more targeted interventions so that we get the right treatment to the right patients at the right time. So moving on to Project Talia, um, the aim I said, as I said before, of Project Talia is create trustworthy AI systems to improving mental health. So taking this concept of heterogeneity and understanding that um, heterogeneity in response, can we use this as a route to personalizing intervention? So, we all know the statistics on mental health. So we know that one in four of us at some point in our lives would be affected by a mental health condition. In the UK, it's the largest cause of disability. And also it's the number one reason for people calling in um, sick off work. And also it's a huge cost to the, to the economy, both in the UK and globally as well. And in Project Talia, we have a collaboration with Silver Cloud Health. Silver Cloud Health is the is the leading um, digital mental health platform in, in the UK. So they have over 30 mental health programs. They're based on 16 years of research. So it's a group that started out of Trinity College in Dublin, Ireland. They've shown that cognitive behavioral therapy has up to 65% significant clinical change in depression and anxiety scores. And they've shown the effectiveness of their platform in reducing um, PHQ and GAD as metrics of depression and anxiety. So clouds used by 250 organizations worldwide. And the current statistics are there are more than half a million users of Soul Cloud as of date. So within Project Talia, we have three main aims that we're using, three main focus areas that we're using to actualize the strategy of creating trustworthy AI systems in mental health. So the first is around improving patients' engagement. And I'll focus, the study I'll, I'll highlight in a moment is all about looking at how can we understand heterogeneity and behavior and patterns of cognitive behavioral therapy um, to, to really, how do we understand heterogeneity in this space so that we can have early interventions um, and more targeted interventions based on behavior and based on affinity to certain modules or tools on the cognitive behavioral therapy platform. The second aspect is improving patient outcomes. 
So based on how people respond to treatment, how can we personalize interventions? And the third aspect is on upskilling supporters. So we have some work which we published earlier this year, um, which is about how can we create decision support tools around supporter or therapist language and trying to see what are effective languages, language strategies for, for different groups of people as well. So how can we optimize support, human supporter interventions on a digital mental health platform? So the main um, machine learning challenges that we've been looking at, especially to stratify, so understanding patient subtypes and which subtypes respond to which interventions, making predictions, so trying to understand client engagement and outcomes, um, based on based on the stratification and prediction, when is the right time to intervene? Um, when is the when is the moment to notify a patient to take a certain action? Um, we also look at improving, so identifying successful patterns in supportive behavior in relation to different patient subtypes. Sorry, just gonna... um, sorry. Could we could we mute? I think someone's unmuted. And the third is to, and the fifth is to personalize. So how can we tailor content and delivery to achieve optimal therapy outcomes um, for individual patients? So in this particular study, which we published earlier this year in JAMA, the challenge was around how can we improve engagement? Um, sorry, Jennifer, could you mute, please? Um, I'm hearing background noise. Uh, so. So one of the things we're trying to do is understand heterogeneity and engagement with cognitive behavioral therapy. And engagement is a huge challenge because we know that um, we know that digital mental health interventions, they are clinically effective. If we take, do a randomized control trial, we do see evidence of efficacy of CBT. But the number one problem is engagement. So there's high dropout on these, these interventions. So the challenge we're trying to address is what are the mechanisms by which engagement with internet-delivered psychological interventions are associated with depression and anxiety? So this association and this mechanism is unclear. So in this study, we tried to identify say, what are the behavior types? Can we identify distinct behavior types based on how people engage with an inter internet-based CBT platform um, for symptoms of depression and anxiety? So in this study, we used data from 56,604 um, de-identified patients, uh, and we focused just on one program within, within the SilverCloud platform, which was based from anxiety and depression. And these patients um, inscribed on this program between 2015 to 2019. So we use the hidden Markov model to try to see whether we can identify this heterogeneity and just to explain at a high level. So we have these Ys, which represents um, what is the observed engagement at a particular time point. So for each patient's I, we, we had an observation of whether they engaged with a particular section, which is represented by S, the square of S, um, and there are 12 different sections on the platform. So those 12 different sections Two of them represent what's used for the core CBT, so the tools and modules that are in core CBT. But there are other sections as well related to how people, um, how people, uh, whether people get in touch with their support supporter or therapist, and also whether people have a great affinity to using a journal, for example, or whether there are other elements outside of the main CBT platform that people have been using as well. So we have these observed states, Y, which represents um, what have we actually observed with in terms of has a person engaged in a particular week with a particular with a particular intervention. And we assume some latent state X, which is a representation of those 12 points of, of engagement, which is the latent state of, of how engaged someone is. So we assume a distribution around those X's. And we also wanted to know what's the transition probability over time, which is represented by A. So what is the probability of someone over time within the platform going from one state to another? So do they increase engagement? Do they decline in engagement? Does it go up and down? So we model that with these with these state transition probabilities based on our latent, um, our latent engagement subtype. And then we have an overarching latent subtype of engagement, K, uh, which represents which, which we use to encode, are there these different subtypes? 
and we don't know the number of subtypes a priori, and we don't know the number of people in each of those subtypes, but we want to infer this from the distribution of the, of the data. So um, the reference for this paper is at the bottom of this slide. We identified five distinct subtypes of patients and engagement and identified, um, and this identification can allow us to personalize therapies. So just at a high level, um, we we saw two, we saw five different groups. So the the lowest line, so the y-axis here represents the percentage of people who engage with the platform, and the x-axis represents the number of weeks. So the median time on the platform was 14 weeks. So we modeled up to 14 weeks for inferring these different subtypes. And we see that there's a group class one that has um, a high probability of dropout over time. And the group with the highest uh, engagement is class five. But what we also notice is, is those with the most engagement aren't necessarily those who have the best clinical outcomes. So class five, we see that they all, all groups of patients do have improved PHQ or depression scores and also GAD or anxiety scores at the end of 14 weeks. So we are seeing a change in those scores, but the ones who do better are class three. Um, so they have the greatest improvement in anxiety and the greatest improvement in depression as well. And the differences between each of these is statistically significant as well. So not only are there differences, but also there are differences in the rate of change over time for these different classes. And what we see on the right hand side is that there, there are different patterns of use. So what we noticed with class three is that these were users who tended to use the platform in more of a linear fashion. So uh, wh where are we taking this work forward? So the future roadmap, what we want to do is use this to really anchor into what are good personalization strategies for these different um, for these different subgroups. So in the paper as well, we describe uh, different elements of the program and we see that um, that different subtypes not only had different patterns of usage, but also they had different preferences in, in terms of the type of tools and the type of modules that they use. So this can really elucidate different modalities of engagement, but also different modalities of personalization as well. And this may facilitate tailoring interventions according to these specific subtypes of engagement for individuals with depression and anxiety. And one of the huge implications is that with this, by being able to identify early on, and in the paper as well, we show that we can identify these different subtypes within the first two weeks. Um, this may lead us to better triage patients, to provide more personalized therapeutic activities and help them to improve outcomes and reduce the overall burden of mental health disorders. And I think with machine learning for um, healthcare and particularly in mental health, it's really important to think of the context that we need to develop machine learning solutions that take into that are problem specific. And um, so this study has been done in collaboration with uh, a lot of social scientists, domain experts and machine learning researchers like myself, using a data-driven approach, but also driven very much by domain knowledge. And just to end off, I'd like to thank everybody who's collaborated in, in this team, both in Microsoft and also in Silver Cloud Health as well. And thank you.